Okay, this class looks at the light dependent stages of photosynthesis. Remember, photosynthesis has uh, two parts to it the light dependent state, which requires light in order to occur, and the light independent state. And basically what happens in the light dependent stage is uh, water is broken down, producing oxygen, and the hydrogen from the water is used to convert something called NADP plus into NADPH. So today's objectives is this basically explain the process of photophosphorylation with respect to photosynthetic electron transport. So in this process we're going to see the movement of lots of electrons and then ATP's function as the universal energy currency. We've looked at this already. Uh, ATP is the currency in which uh, organisms use energy. Energy might be con uh, con uh, contained in glucose, for example, but it can't be spent as glucose. It has to be converted into ATP first. So, uh, what we're going to look at, therefore, is photosynthesis involves a complex series of reactions that convert carbon dioxide into water and carbohydrates and uh, yeah, convert carbon dioxide and water into carbohydrates and oxygen. So notice the hydrogen uh, in the water is used to reduce carbohydrates and by reduction that can be an addition of hydrogen. And these reactions can be divided into two processes. The light dependent reactions. And these use sunlight energy to produce ATP and NADPH. And that is a function of the light dependent reactions. They form ATP and NADPH. That's why they occur. And the light independent reactions. These use the energy from the ATP and the reducing power from the NADPH to convert carbon dioxide into carbohydrate. Remember, reduction can be addition of hydrogen and it can also be addition of electrons and both of those are involved in the formation of NADPH. I said, remember, reduction is a gain of electrons. So this is a diagrammatic, diagrammatic uh, representation of what happens in photosynthesis. You have the light reactions where water is broken down and oxygen is formed. And also ADP is converted into ATP and NADP plus into NADPH and these are going to be used in something called the Calvin cycle and as a Calvin cycle turns around glucose is produced and notice in the Calvin cycle carbon dioxide enters the chloroplast and as I said, the Calvin cycle represents the light independent reactions. However, they require ATP and NADPH in order to occur. And photosynthesis, can be, the light stages, can be illustrated by this diagram here, where PAR is absorbed by photosystem 2 
and PAR, of course, is photosynthetic reactive radiation. So, photosynthetically active radiation is absorbed by the chlorophyll molecule and electrons become excited and therefore they become stronger reducing agents and therefore they can reduce a system of electron carriers and the electron carriers slowly pass are passed down from one to another of lower energy until it goes to photosystem one which is uh, this one here. P700 indicates a wavelength at which uh, the chlorophyll molecule absorbs uh, light. Just as uh, 680 is uh, for when photosystem 1 absorbs light. Notice electrons are being lost and these are returned by the splitting of water. The water splits and gives up electrons and, to, and therefore leaves to eight atoms and half a, molecule, half a mole of water. Uh, these electrons uh, can ultimately be used to convert NADP plus into NADP8 um, the process can occur without electron loss but then water isn't broken down uh, we'll come into that in more detail later on so if we go back to this, we can notice we have two photosystems. This is photosystem one. So this is photosystem two, and this is photosystem one. And what is a photosystem? It's an antenna complex, and this consists of photosynthetic pigments. Primarily chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, and carotenoids. And these pigments absorb light, which is passed on to the reaction center. Uh, then you have a reaction center, which is a chlorophyll molecule, along with a primary electron acceptor. And you receive energy from the antenna complex, so the chlorophyll can be reduced. And the electron acceptor does convert to light energy into chemical energy. So this is the system diagrammatically. Photons go into uh, a series of antenna pigments. These are these ones. These antenna pigments ultimately hand the electron to the primary uh, uh, to, to the reaction center chlorophyll molecule. which can uh, transfer it to a, a primary electron acceptor. Uh, and then you have photosystem 2 is illustrated below. This is photosystem 2 or P680. Um, and in this uh, system, P680, wavelength of maximum light is absorbed in nanometers. When the chlorophyll gives electrons to so electron carriers, it becomes oxidized, and hence it takes electrons from water to return to its original state. And these are light harvesting pigments. These are going to carry it to the reaction center. Uh, since electrons are being lost, they need to be returned by the splitting of water. As well as that, uh, the photolysis of water results in the buildup of H plus ions on the inside of a thylakoid. So this is the inside of the thylakoid, and I'm going to have a 
large number of H plus ion seals. Uh, please, uh, um, please to say these protons pass through the membrane through a specialized protein channel that produce ATP. That should have said protons um, or H plus ions. Uh, and when the H plus ions pass through this uh, channel, uh, ATP is produced and also NADH is reduced. Uh, and this is a system called chemiosmosis. And this is basically illustrated here again. In photosystem one, electrons are absorbed. Uh, yeah, photons are a light is absorbed. Exciting electrons, which then pass through a series of carriers. Uh, the H plus ions, if you see them here, can move through a specialized uh, channel where ADP is converted into ATP. And the H plus is also used to reduce uh, NAD to NADH. That's the photolysis. Okay. We've done this already. Then photosystem 1 receives electrons from photosystem 2 and uses them to reduce NADP plus, that should be, together with H plus ions to produce, uh, produced by the photolysis of water. Now photosystem 1, however, can produce ATP without input from photosystem 2. But in this case, it can't produce NADPH. NADP plus is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate and H simply means it's reduced. Uh, and if you have a photosystem 1, uh, the process by which ATP is produced is called cyclic photophosphorylation. It's phosphorylation because phosphate is being added to ADP. It's cyclic because it just goes round in a cycle because there's no transfer of electrons. Photosystem 2 requires input from photosystem 1. And ATP produced this way is called non-cyclic photophosphorylation. There are two types of photophosphorylation, cyclic and non-cyclic. Um, so cyclic only P photosystem one is involved. Non-cyclic, both of them are involved. Cyclic, water is not, not required. <coughs> Non-cyclic, photolysis of water required. Cyclic oxygen <coughs> is not evolved. This one oxygen is evolved. And ADPH is not synthesized. And ADPH synthesized, used to produce additional ATP in order to meet energy demands. Whereas products can be used for light independent reactions. So let's look at the process. The chlorophyll molecule absorbs photons of light. And this causes electrons in the chlorophyll molecule to get excited and hence more easily lost. The chlorophyll molecule becomes uh, a stronger reducing agent in the world. So it's going to give the electrons to something else. The electrons are transferred to an electron acceptor on the thylakoid membrane. And these electrons are then transferred to a series of electron acceptors. And energy is lost in the process. Uh, the energy is used to pump H plus ions into the thylakoid membrane. In fact, that should be an out of the thylakoid membrane. We need to change that. 
the electrons at the coffee molecule lost are replaced by photolysis, the splitting of water molecules using light energy. If photosystem 2 is present, these electrons are passed onto photosystem 1. Photosystem 1 had lost an electron by a method similar to photosystem 2. The electron for photosystem 1 eventually used to re reduce an ATP plus. And the buildup of H plus ions inside the thylakoid produces an electrochemical gradient giving potential energy. And the energy can be discharged when H plus ions pass through an ATP synthesis enzyme that crosses the thylakoid membrane. And as it passes through the membrane, ATP is generated. Um,